here at Twin Spirits Distillery and this is Things, People, Places. And that is the spicy turmeric gimlet. What's up y'all, welcome back to Things, People, Places. Today we're stepping away from the adventuring stuff and we're going back on the entrepreneurial business side of things. And we are at a distillery in Northeast Minneapolis called Twin Spirits Distillery. And we are going to meet Michelle. This is her, um, this is her project, which has turned into something pretty special. So we're gonna go in. She's gonna show us a little bit of the operation. We're gonna poke our heads in, probably see a cocktail be made. Probably have a cocktail, maybe a little uh, cup of coffee. So let's head inside, talk to Michelle. distillation process. Today we've got some rum running over on the pot still. Um, the pot, this pot still is awesome because it it, uh, it allows a lot of the flavors of the ferment to come through. So this is a rum run so the molasses is really coming through with the pot still. Uh, so we basically do everything by hand um, from start to finish. So even our labeling and bottling, everything's just done by hand. Um, it's a very strict craft procedure for sure. That's awesome. And in this small space, you kind of have to turn it around as needed. This is our bottler, so when Aaron's doing bottling, you kind of have to move stuff around and have that take over the world. So it's, yeah. all, it's all about whatever we're doing in the moment. Yeah, so what makes this one unique by having Kind of this um, it, that had, so, so this one is a, is more about stripping out a lot from the ferment. Erin okay. had talked about that this one is about keeping everything in from yeah. that ferment. Okay. So there's very little um, what we call reflux going on in this still okay. versus that one. So it's going the the alcohol is being made in. Um, I don't know, I kind of describe it as a quiet manner. Yeah. As quietly as possible. It's <laughs> like there's just less alcohol that comes up at a time through okay. this pro procedure. It's way simpler. Yeah. Inside there in the column, um, out here is a, a reflux still. And then that big uh, condenser there, which is on the right side. Okay. It's way more complicated inside so that it's, it's really um, driving more pure alcohol ethanol, if you will, to yeah. come up through it, whereas this is retaining some of the stuff and in, in, in the density of the alcohol is much reduced with okay. this one. So, And that's how you get that more flavor yeah, from that yeah, yeah, too. Yeah. Just getting a lot of other stuff carried up with it, whereas this is just going to take all that away. So. Hey there, we're going to head into the cocktail room and show you how to make a couple of cocktails with Jordan, my bar manager. Hello. This is Jordan Peterson, and she's going to make um, one of our crowd favorites, our spicy turmeric gimlin, and explain the process of how she came up with it. Yeah, so today I'm making, as Michelle said, our spicy turmeric gimlet. This is a cocktail that I came up with myself. Um, before my job here, I worked at a juice bar, and so my knowledge, my previous knowledge of health shots and different ingredients that are really good for the body. Uh, inspired me to make this cocktail. I wanted to make one of my favorite shots and bring it into the bar as a cocktail itself. Um, so starting off the main ingredient of this cocktail was turmeric. Our first, um, our first step in this is to infuse the turmeric into a, one of our spirits. I chose our house vodka for this one. I thought it played really well with the turmeric without overpowering the main flavor that some other botanicals may do. 
So first step, we take our fresh organic turmeric um, and chop it very, very finely. The finer you get it chopped up, the more of the ingredients, the nutrition, and the color will leach into your spirit. And this is an example of what that looks like in the batch, large batch of that. It'll get darker um, the longer it sits. I'd say about, this is about day two. It starts to get really deep orange. You really start to see the color leach out of the root itself and into the spirit. How long does it usually sit for? Uh, it sits for three full days. Okay. Uh, the second infusion, we, it, we will infuse it a little bit longer and it gets to be about the same color. But depending on the turmeric, it can really vary. Some days or some times of the year, the turmeric can take just hours to get to this deep golden brown color. Oh, wow. So you really play as it goes and definitely do the taste test to make sure it's about the same as everything else. Right. So that's main ingredient number one in our turmeric vodka gimlet. Perfect. Uh, the second main ingredient would be the syrup and we do a ginger syrup again playing with those healthy root flavors um we wanted to bring the spiciness of that in um while also balancing it out with the sweet is why we chose to make it into our syrup then the third main component of the cocktail we have the spirit the sweet and then the sour of course with this cocktail we did a lot of renditions we like to play a lot with our house made ingredients just to get that right balance for this one, I decided on both lemon and lime for my sour. I felt both ingredients um, really balance each other out and let the turmeric and ginger flavors come forward the most. And then the fourth, I suppose, fifth and final important ingredient is our cayenne pepper. With these, I really honed in on balancing the, the root, the earthy root flavors, the sweet and spicy of the ginger, but I definitely wanted a punch of that spice as well. Yeah. So adding a dash or two of that cayenne really gives it the punch that we're, I was looking for in this cocktail. So that is all of our ingredients in one cocktail kit. One cocktail, we give it a really nice, good shake. Especially with cocktails with the citrus, the shaking is very important to soften the terpenes in the citrus and blend the flavors all together. Then we are currently using all these wonderful compostable cups for our patio, keeping. COVID. Oh yes, yeah. always <laughs> COVID. Keeping things clean, avoiding touching things people have touched, and they're just so cute. Right. And then, as a gimlet, you typically has a floated lime wheel. Adds a little bit more of the citrus smell as you drink it as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I think that's what really adds the freshness to me. Adds yeah. a really nice fresh smell and flavor as you yeah. drink it. And that is the spicy turmeric gimlet. I love it. Mm -hmm. Would you like to taste? Yes, please. I've been waiting for this. That citrus is so nice on top. It's not at all what you would expect yeah. in this drink. It's a little healthy too. <laughs> Kill two birds with one stone. <laughs> yeah, so I um, was turning 50 when this kind of idea started growing. And it was because I, um, I mean, we all, there are many people that when they turn 50 decided to go down a different path. But, you know, go to a conference, go see if it's something that fits you. And so I did, and I went to a breakout session of women distillers, um, which was a very small amount of people, <laughs> even though it was a nationwide conference. Yeah. And um, in essence, I drank the Kool-Aid that they were serving <laughs> and just got really fired up from co talking with them. And, and one of the simplest statements they made, it was, people kept asking like, you know, why should I pursue this? What should, you know, why should I do this? And they're like, because you can, just, just do it, yeah. you know? And I was like, and for whatever reason, that simplicity was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, and so I thought, well, can I really do this? How can I make drinks and, and spirits that people would be interested in? And I think it's because of that lack of that history, if you will, for me, that that worked for me. Because it was, um, sometimes I describe it as like a kid in a candy shop. It was like, oh, wait, this and that and, and combine these things. And I just, all of a sudden, I... Um, was liking more liquors than I ever had before and 
like gin. I didn't think I'd ever like a gin. Uh, I really love our gin. And, and the sweetness factor for me is dissipating. I used to, it always was like, I want it sweet, I don't want to taste the alcohol. And now I'm like, couldn't be more opposite of that. You know, One of the biggest things that helped me was using a consultant. Um, she was a fantastic consultant um, in that she did not answer my questions very well and, and it was uh, very strategic on her part to do it that way and in the end I realized that her, the way she handled that, let me find my voice in this. Well, and so. we don't, I never was trying to get something that is the same as somebody else. I, I love that, uh, it was at the very beginning of the craft movement here in Minnesota. Um, I want to say there were four people in the guild at the time. It was uh, Vikra, Dunord, um, Panther, that, that might have been it. I certainly hope I'm not forgetting somebody, but it was very, very small. You'd call each other up. I'd say that that still is very um, present um, in terms of the, um, the camaraderie and helpfulness with the other distillers. I mean, it's, it's to me, unheard of. Um, but it's very strong here that we help each other out and collaborate with each other. Uh, so plans for this space, so one, it's been really, uh, you know, COVID has just made us all pivot and restructure on a pretty quick pace, yeah. which we luckily had the flexibility to do that and the bandwidth in our heads to be able to do it. It can get kind of overwhelming. Yeah. Um, and so it, it's already a big difference from what we had. Our cocktail room is, is so small. Uh, it's uh, uh, 49 people is our capacity, um, but now with this 60 by 40 tent outside, we've been able to, one, take a bigger off-road. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, and, and then I, because of owning all this property, so it's it's uh, these two lots here, the, the building next door. The hope is that we're going to connect the buildings. Uh, we just started talking with an architect who's going to come up with some plans. I think our the idea we kind of came up with is that we're going to take this shipping container okay. and it's going to become the center part of the the uh, the hallway, if you will, yeah. and blow off that that old school way to open it and just have like a proper door there. And that'll be kind of like the the entrance to our new space um, and have a bunch of lockers for staff and stuff. And then and then all that will be production for the distillery. Plus, the, the building next door is kind of split into into thirds, and so the back third will remain part of the distillery. It's all more just storage, um, but we would probably do like fermentations and maybe some uh, new still within this hallway space. And then we're hoping to turn the other part of it into one, uh, a much lo uh, a large uh, aging room, and then um, hopefully like three bathrooms, and then the front part be a cocktail room. She uh, also started, um, a coffee service last fall. Um, we're calling it M Coffee because our, our, our product, our core product line is, is um, our, our M vodka, gin, rum, and whiskey. And, and my name is Michelle, and that's where the M comes from. <laughs> um, and so we, we kind of parlayed it into coffee and, and really like the logo we have for our M Coffee. Yeah. So it might be that that becomes more of a concentration of our coffee component. There will still be a bar there because yeah. we have lots of coffee cocktails. Um, but I think just it gives us that flexibility of having the two different spaces. So really it started with the vodka and the gin. Um, and uh, I did not want to create something that was already on the shelf. So I looked at what most people were using and most of it was grains or, um, or corn. I mean, I know that you can make vodka from anything that will ferment. So I was just like, well... What, do we, what else could there be and what, so I, I landed on sugar. We use um, a, a granulated raw sugar cane, so, that, so it's like a brown sugar in a way. Um, and we ferment that and, and it, just, it just worked right off the bat. There was really no tweaking or testing to it. It just simply worked for us. So what we did is we, we took that, um, for, that ferment of the sugar um, and did a distillation with botanicals for gin. So it's, it's very different from our vodka and we do it in a different style still. Um, and it's a very light botanical front for our gin. Um, you could kind of say it's similar to like an old Tom gin in a way because it is a little bit sweeter and it is lower in that botanical front. Um, but that's not what we were going for necessarily. It's just what fit our taste profile. Outside of the obvious, like coming to sit here, uh, what are the, what's, the, what's the best ways for 
viewers, people to, to support? I know we kind of talk about cocktail kits. You know, yep, we sell the cocktail kits. Um, honestly, one, one of the things that has been difficult for us is that our distribution has not been leading the charge for our business. And being that that's my main part of my business is manufacturing spirits, it would be great for that part of us to pick up. Our cocktail room has always carried us, which is not a business model. Yeah. <laughs> Luckily, it has worked for me, you know, and it's it's been very scrappy getting there, but, but it would be great to get that distribution part of it going, which is people going and asking for it in um, their local stores, their local liquor stores, and, and, uh, and that's how you usually get in places the best, yeah. um, is by people saying, I want this. Um, so, for, so people asking for our products is probably the biggest help. All right, y'all, that is going to wrap today's episode of Things People Places with Twin Spirits Distillery in Northeast Minneapolis. I'm gonna be honest with you, she, Jordan, made a gimlet, the one that we talked about in the video, and I got to have a taste of that thing, and that is probably one of the best cocktails I've ever had. Shout out to Jordan for making that cocktail. That was unbelievable. Highly recommend you guys check it out. It's over in over in Northeast, um, almost right off Central and 29th. And so it's such a cool little spot. Revamped their parking lot to be a, a tent right now, but even come fall, they're gonna do some fire pits outside. It's gonna be a really cozy, cool spot. Really embracing the kind of the the northern part of Minnesota. So, or, or being from Minnesota, if you will. But again, um, I'm going to link all of their information in the description box below. Be sure to check them out. If you like their stuff, go to your local liquor store and request them to carry Twin Spirits Distillery. That's going to be the biggest way of helping these guys out, especially during these weird times. Um, so yeah, thank you so much to Michelle for having me. Thank you for the drink. Got a couple coffee drinks. They have their own uh, coffee setup that she had talked about. So I got a latte and Americano, both perfect. And we're also gonna be doing a giveaway. So stay tuned to the giveaway, I'll announce the details. Thank you so much with that one. Bye.